gnome. She turned out so cute. I just, I fell in love with her when I got done and I just love how I did her hair. I kind of um, went off a uh, uh, gnome I had seen on Pinterest. I did the body different and I did the hair a little different and then I made um, the baby and the baby was part of the pattern on Pinterest. Um, but I don't know how they did it, so I just cre had to create my own. And then I created the little boy, and I will show you how I did his hair, and I will show you how um, we will go over how to do the pattern for the body for Grandma Ellie. And I did it in yellow and kind of a golden fur, but I, I really like the gray one, and then it goes along with the grandma theme. So I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm going to show you how I cut the fur for the little boy's hair. I tried a hat, but I didn't like it. So I just left the hat off of him. Um, if you like my channel and you want to see more of this, click on that subscribe button. And when you hit that bell, that will notify you each time I upload a new video. If you already have subscribed, thank you very, very much for supporting my crafting community and my channel. So let's get started and make Grandma Ellie and her grandkids. Okay, so let's get started and I'm going to first go over um, how to do the pattern. So I had created mine, this is out of some really thin chipboard. Um, it's like really thick paper. I thought I was buying a lot uh, thicker chipboard when I went on um, Amazon and I guess I didn't read what I was buying. So I'm still using it. So I'm going to use it for my patterns instead of just using a piece of paper. So this is the shape of the pattern that we're going to do. And what you're going to do is you're going to take, you're going to need a ruler and we're going to go over five eighth, five eighths of an inch from this corner. This is going to be our top. So we're gonna go over five eighths of an inch, and I like to use my little ruler here too. So we're gonna go over five eighths and make a mark. And then from that, you're gonna go over three and five eighths and make a mark. And then we are gonna go down six and three quarters from that top. So six and three quarters, you're going to make a mark. And then you're going to go over from that mark, from the edge of the, the paper or whatever you're using for your pattern, you're going to go over five inches. And then we are going to connect these. So you're going to line up, say these two that are on the inside, take your ruler and line those up, those marks, and then make a line. And you're going to do it with this mark on the side down at the bottom, the six and three quarter over to that five inch, draw a line. And then from this five eighth, five eighth inch mark down to that three quarter, you probably have to put your ruler in a little bit so you don't go off the paper or whatever you're using. And that's our pattern for the body. And we're going to, I'm not going to cut that out because I have mine already and I'm going to use this yellow material. Actually, I got my pattern right here. So we're going to take and you're going to cut two pieces and I'm not doing anything on the fold because we need to um, have a bottom. Let me get her because I left her over here. Okay, so let's see if she can be in view so you guys can see her. She's not in my way. And so she has a bottom that I sewed on. So she's got a front and a back. So we're going to just take, and I just take, put my pattern down. And when it's thicker, then I just draw and I move it over because we're going to get her arms out of here. And I just take a pencil and draw. If you want to make your pattern a different way, that is totally up to you. And then her... Um, her base for the circle 
is about a three inch diameter circle. And her arms are, I have to get my, um, her arms are two and a quarter inches by six and a half. So I'm just gonna kind of make a mark and then go down six and a half inches. So I didn't really make, I didn't make a pattern for this. So if we want, if you want to just do that with your ruler, that might be quicker. It's up to you if you want to make a pattern, if you just want to wing it, but I don't want her arms really thick or wide, I guess not thick, wide. Okay, so then we're going to cut these out. And then we are going to sew these by machine. If you think you can hand sew this, go right ahead. If you want to use, this is a cotton. If you want to use a um, flannel, you can do that. Fleece um, might be kind of thick. I'm kind of going so it looks like what the, and some of the um, senior citizen ladies they will probably still wear the house coats. So that's kind of what the look I was going for. So we have that. And then we're going to cut out our arms. And I did not put anything in her arms. I made her hands kind of like the way I do my noses. And um, but smaller. And I did, I just wanted to keep her arms flat. So I didn't put anything in her arms. And then I put some lace and buttons. So now I need a piece for the circle or for the bottom. So you're just gonna take and draw that out. I try to make a bigger circle. Um, and when I first did this, I kind of, it was just playing around with the size of the circle and I made it bigger. And when I went to pin it on to sew it, I had to cut it down and cut it down. And even when I still, if I go to pin it and it's still too big, I have to unpin it and then just cut it a little bit smaller. You'll know when you go to pin this on, I will show you. So we, um, we're going to do some, I'm going to cut, do some other, uh, show you how to do, um, the cutting for this, for his arms, so we can sew everything at once. And then I just want her arms have to be long enough so that they can wrap around, they go underneath her hair, and then come to the front. So she has enough to hold on to the baby. So we have her pieces. And for his, I cut his. This is a um, plaid flannel, and I got this in a... Um, at a rummage sale, I believe. Um, is he at a rummage? I think I got it at the rummage sale. At um, and she had stacks of little pieces of fabric, and I wish I would have bought more of them. So this is an eight by eight inch square, and then for his arms, I just cut one piece that is about two and a quarter inches by about ten, ten and a half. And we have to have his um, so that they can kind of get tucked under. If, if it's one, it's probably better. I think when I did this one, um, I cut it in two. So I think if it just stays as one. Um, but we'll see because sometimes if it's too skinny, I have a hard time turning the right side out. So, um, so that we have that to sew. And I think that's it. So I'm going to get you guys over to the machine and then we are going to do our sewing. We're going to pin, I don't even pin this. This is his arms. You're going to do sew a tube so that you're going to sew a quarter inch along the long edge. This we don't need to sew. 
And when we sew her, we're going to sew up these two long sides and leave these two, the top, this is the top, the wide part is the bottom, leave those open. And then her arms, we're going to do the same. We're going to sew right along that long edge, a quarter inch. And I don't really pin any of that. I will, we will do a hemming, but I'm going to try a different way. I'm not going to sew it and I'm just going to do it like that so it should stay so if you want to turn that over a quarter of an inch okay so let me get you over to the sewing machine and then I will be right back the little boy's arms and I'm just going to fold over a edge and I'm not going to I'm just for this just to try this I'm not going to tack it down um, if you want to pin it, you can do that just so it doesn't come undone or get um, sewed in the wrong way. So I'm just going to pin it down just like that so I have my edges so that everything lines up. Okay. And I'm just using black thread. Um, let's see. I have a different presser foot on. So let's see if this is going to work or if I'm going to have to change it. And just make sure that your sides are even. This long edge so that one end isn't overlapping. Make sure it all gets caught. And then back stitch. That's important when you have to turn something right side out. I'm just going to get this pin. It's kind of in my way. So you got to make sure that that folded edge stays folded and doesn't come up. Okay, now we're going to do the same with her arms. You're going to fold it over. And I'm going to fold it over just a little bit more. And just finger press it. And hers I could have left one piece too, but um, I had to position each arm a little differently. So I had to make sure it was... Um, in the right spot but you could if you want to leave her arms one piece you can do that but just remember to back stitch at the beginning and the end and I'm gonna leave that piece on there lift my presser foot and my needle and not even take it off right now because that will save me some time so do the same to this arm is where we're folding it over okay and then we're aligning our long edges. And you can hand sew this too. Um, I would rather machine sew it because it is faster for me. If I was retired and not working, I might, but. And I'm just using black thread because that's what I had in my machine. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Unless I was doing some top stitching. Okay, so now we're going to do her body. We're going to sew this long side and this long side. And you're going to do your back stitch again. Make sure your edges, everything is lined up. Okay, this one I'll have to pull off and cut that off and then sew the other side the same way. I probably went in a little bit, maybe more than a quarter of an inch, but you don't want to go too far because otherwise it should be too skinny. 
but I like the smaller print better for her than a bigger print because, um, I mean, if it was a, you know, bigger pattern or a bigger gnome or whatever you're making, you know, like when you're making a pillow or whatever, I guess, I don't know, but it just worked out. Um, it just looks better with a, um, smaller pattern for her. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to pin, I'm going to take and start pinning. And this is where I'm going to find out if my circle is too big or too small. And I'm just going to start, I usually start by this, the, the seam and line those edges up and then pin it. I pin it from, so that the circle is underneath. I pin it on this side, on the top side, on the, the body side. And I think you have to pin this. I think it's really hard to do this. Um, and so I circle in the bot on the bottom of a piece without pinning it. So then you're just going to take your circle and kind of go around and match up your edges. And so as you go around, you'll find out when you get to the end if it's too small or if it's too big. So these the circles are and diameters are a little tough for me because I don't know how to measure, figure it out before I do the pattern. It's kind of I do it as I'm making it. And so then you have to make sure that you have enough of that circle so that you can get it sewed. So when I do the sewing, I will probably take a more than a quarter of an inch seam just so I know I have that. And this pen is... So this is when it takes a little bit of time is to get this circle pinned. And if you don't have to open your seam, if you don't want to... It's not going to create that much bulk if you don't. And this is kind of how I've sold some of my other circles. Um, I have another gnome coming up that turned out really cute. So he'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks or so. And I'm just still trying to figure out if my circle is going to be big enough. And this is going to be a little bit longer video when it's a little bit more um, intricate and there's more parts and stuff like that. Okay, so... Now I'm going to start at the seam and I'm going to kind of put it up like this so I have it flat and I hold on to the middle of it. So here's my circle in the bottom and here's the top up here. So I kind of hold on to it like this and so I can turn it. Okay, so you're just going to go in, you're going to back stitch again. And you're going to want to go around slow. I leave my pins in. I usually don't have any problem with my needle hitting the pins. Once in a while you'll hear it, but it doesn't, um, it usually doesn't affect them. So just, I go in far enough so that I make, making sure that I get that bottom and that top. And I'm just going to take that pin out because I want to make sure it doesn't get Puckered. So this is where if you take it slow, you're going to have better luck and it's not, you're not going to have to redo it. And I have found that out when I have sewed other projects. If I try to race through my sewing and it, I end up redoing it. And then you get to the end and you're going to backstitch again. Okay, so I'm going to pause you and I'm going to take us back over to the work table. We are back. I got my sewing all done and I turned my arms 
um, right side out. I actually had to re-sew them because they were too small. So when you sew them, I would make them probably about two and a half inches wide because when you make their hands, I make it like I make a nose, okay? And then I leave some of the, about an inch of the, the thread going around. I will show you when I make her nose. Um, and you're gonna leave this so that we can tuck it into the end of her sleeve and then glue it. And then we'll just tie that off. We'll glue it and then we'll put some ties, okay? So you're making it just like you would a nose, except you're gonna leave this length. And I used for these, you could do about a five by five inch square, okay? And then um, for his nose, I did probably about the same. If you need it a little bigger so it's easier to handle, you can do that. Um, and then for her nose, I did like about a seven by seven. And we'll, I'll do that one with you. And I'm going to show you how I tie it off differently. So let's get her body. And this is what her body looks like. So there's the bottom. Okay, so let's get this turned right side out. And we're going to put our cardboard piece. And you, can, you might have to see if it's going to be too big. Um, a lot of this is just adjusting it as you go. And if it's too big, then we have to cut it down. And it is. So, because you don't want it sticking um, out beyond the seam that you've sewn. And you're going to have your seams are going to be on her sides. Okay. Unless you do it on the fold and the seam is in the back, but the way I made the pattern. So, if you have a different way of making your pattern, however you want to do it. I'm just giving you some ideas. So that works out pretty good. And I'm not, if there's puckers at the bottom, I'm not worried about it. And then we're gonna take and try to pour in some rice. And I'm gonna pour a good amount in the bottom and on my table. <laughs> and I will show you what I keep my rice in. This is a Rubbermaid container that I have gotten. Um, there's a couple of places. Ace Hardware, I believe, carries these. And um, what I have in my town in Minnesota is um, a L&M Fleet Supply. So it's the ones that's a rubber made and they have different sizes because I have this one that I have my beads in and then they have um, a size up from this and then another size I believe. So three or four sizes and I use these for um, in my pantry and stuff too. So this is what I keep my rice in and I always have the same cup. So that I'm not taking it out of a bag because I will pour it into the bag and I have some other containers that I use too but that's the main one I keep at my craft table okay so we have the rice and now we're gonna stuff her and you gotta stuff her pretty firm she's not gonna have any legs or feet I mean you could do if you wanted to do like little slippers and I kind of have a way to do it um, so when I do, I'm going to do a video on gnome shoes because I have a um, subscriber from overseas that cannot get the little party favor shoes from the dollar store. So I'm going to make a video. Um, if I don't do it tonight, um, I will do it um, probably tomorrow and then try to get it uploaded this week along with Grandma Ellie. So this is Grandma Ellie. My son had come up with a name for the little boy. So this is Timothy. And then I gave the baby, his name is Jake. So we're not gonna stuff this really a lot at the top. I'm actually probably gonna take out some because I did one where I made it too big on top. But we have to get her head on there and her 
well, her, yeah, her head. Her head is a styrofoam cone from the Dollar Tree, and I cut this down. So if you want to cut it shorter, you can cut it if you want to leave it longer. But this, I cut off probably a good inch or so. And then I hollowed out the inside. So how I did that was I took a knife. This is not a knife, but I went in at an angle and then went all the way around and popped it out. Just make sure you don't go poke through the sides and you wanna leave an edge around, okay? So we are going to tie this off. And this is the only time I'm probably gonna use a rubber band, but I'm gonna tie it with string too because I don't use rubber bands very often because I know they can dry out and break. But since we don't have much to work with up here, and then like I said, I'm gonna tie it off with strings. And I'm in the process of starting a Etsy shop and blogging. And so I'm needing, you guys are going to follow me if you want to follow me on my blog when I get it started. Let me know if there's what you struggle with. And um, I have some ideas. I'm probably going to start with organization for our craft room, our craft supplies, um, all of that in general. And I will throw some crafts in there, some projects. But let me know what you guys struggle with what you would like to know i will have some free um, printables downloads so i'm still in the process of learning all that so i'm i'm hoping soon it's, it's been a few months since i've started this journey since january um okay so we have her tied off her seams are at the side and then there's her bottom so that looks good. And then we're gonna do, I'll show you how I do my noses. I, I do them the same, but the way I tie them. So I like her nose to be a little rounder and not too big. And so I do it just like I normally do is I shove it in my hand and I think it's gonna be too much. So I'm gonna take some stuffing out cause I don't want her to have a huge nose. and make sure you get all that stuffing in there and then grab the ends, take your, you gotta have strong thread or double it and have it go over. So it's like this. I'm going to run and get some black so you guys can see the black. I'll be right back. Okay. And I have found uh, it, that I was having a hard time where to keep my spools of thread uh, that I use for tying off. And I keep it in a little crate in front of me. And it works out really good. And I'm going to do a video. <laughs> I've got so many videos, you guys, that I want to do. And it's, it's really hard when I work nine to five, eight thirty to five. Okay, so this is how we normally do it. We have the two strut threads, both ends, and you have it over and you're holding on to this. So you're gonna take just one end and you're gonna wrap it around once and then pull it. Now you're gonna wrap it around about four times or so and then pull them both. And then let it sit there and it's not going to come undone. Once I did this, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have known this. Try this, found this out a long time ago. Because now I can let it sit there and it is not going to just explode. So you can just let it sit, tie it, and not have to worry about it. Okay, so you're going to get your thread, wrap it around once. Take just one end and wrap it around and then tighten it and then wrap that same thread around about four times, five times and then pull both of them. 
and then that'll get it nice and tight and you can just let it sit there if you had to walk away and it's not going to come apart. So now we're going to do like we normally do is we're going to take and pull and get our nose gathered up so it's nice and tight. And probably when I do my a video on the gnome shoes, I will do my nose and show how I do it. Um, how I've made it better to um, tie off. So that looks good. It could be a little smaller. So if you want it round, you're just going to work all the way around it. If you want it flatter, you're just going to pull like from the bottom and the top. Okay, so we're going to cut hers. I hit my head. I had to look. Um, we're going to cut hers short. So you're going to pull back these strings for now. And we're going to glue her nose on. And then you're going to cut that off. But what we're going to do is I'm going to cut these threads. And I'm just going to take a little hot glue and I'm going to go around this just a little bit not a lot and then if we have to when that is set we'll cut some of that excess off so I'm just going to let that sit okay so and I save this excess because I've been able to do when I do like her hands I've been able to do hers so you don't need a lot um so I will show you quick I don't want, this is going to be another long video, you guys. And I apologize, it's just there's so many parts to it. So I just cut a piece like that. I'm just going to take a little bit, let me get, let me get my thread ready. I could have used that. And you're just going to put a little bit in there. And then gather it up. Make sure you got all your ends. So you're going to wrap your thread around. And if you use black or, or white thread or whatever, you're not going to see it because it's going to get tucked in that sleeve. So we have it like that. You're going to take one end, wrap it around, pull both of them. And it doesn't probably matter at this point, but just take one and wrap it around about three, four, five times. And then pull them both. And then it sits there. So to me, that is a big game changer on making these noses. Because I... On the baby, I used a wooden nose, and I will show you what I used, and I'm not sure what it's called. Um, it might be like a stir stick, but we'll, I'll show you when we get to it. So this, you're going to pull this up. If you want it kind of wrinkly, you can leave it, whatever. And if you have a hard time grabbing it, get your needle nose pliers and grab your material, and then you're able to grab it. So that's how I did that. So now, and I'm going to cut some of this off. So I got the thread down here and we're going to cut it. So it's about that. I don't want to cut this thread really short. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and put some glue inside here. And I've got it on low temp and I'm going to squeeze it together. So if you let it sit for a minute, you're able to touch the glue a lot quicker than you can with the hot glue gun. And if there's anything that sticks out, then you can just cut that excess off just so you can get it inside her sleeve. And we can even cut that a little shorter. And I'm going to put a little bit more glue in there. If you want to glue between the folds, if you wanted to wrap your string around, you could do that too. And I'm going to glue that thread down. And we're going to let that sit, but I have two done already. Okay, so we have this. Now we are going to do, um, we have to do lace around her neck. And I'm going to grab a piece about, oh, you could probably go about 10 inches. 
and I don't have a needle threaded. So we're going to thread a needle. And this has got some, I mean, you'd be able to gather it because you're not going to really see the gathers, but it's just um, for, just to decorate the row on the top of her, if it's, if you want to call it a house coat, because that's what grandma's just, that's what they wear. And you don't have to knot it. You're just going to gather it on. I think there's one side that's right and wrong. And I have little holes at the top of my ribbon. So I'm going through those. And I get this lace at the Dollar Tree. So it's kind of, it looks crocheted. So just put this all on your needle. So we can gather it. And then we'll just probably glue it on. And then just make sure you leave it long enough tail so you can tie this off. And if you have a right and a wrong side, make sure you know which is the right and wrong side. So I'm going to kind of put it around. I'm going to cut off some of my excess string. And then I'm just going to tie these in the back. So you could do this however you want to do it. If you want to just glue the lace around, you can do that too. And I don't want it really tight because her head is going to cover up a lot of that top. Okay, so we're just going to start gluing this on right around the front. Down where her kind of neck and the top of her shoulders would be. And then we have her arms. So I seen this, when I seen this on Pinterest, it was a little bit different. She had curlers in her hair and I could not find the curlers. I did find some other ones, but once I tried it, it's like, nope, I didn't like it. And then I came up with this and the, the body was a lot different on the other one too. So then I created this body. So now what I'm doing in the back is I'm just kind of overlapping the two ends and you're not going to really see them. So it's not going to matter because her arms and her hair. And then we can just knot this thread from the lace and just leave a quarter inch or so. And now we're going to take and we're going to put her arms in. And what I did when I did this the second time, I used the edge of the fabric that had a finished edge. So then I didn't have to sew it. So I have tried to do that. And I'm sorry I didn't mention that in the beginning of this video. But if you don't have that, if you want to hem it, or you could use pinking shears if you didn't want to do a hem. Or um, glue just gets really stiff when you're using it on fabric. So we're gonna put both of these in. I gotta make sure I get it on the right end. That's why I left it a little bit longer so it was just easier to get, to, to put it in instead of just having a ball there. I mean, you can use, if you just wanna use the wooden balls. I got these um, and they came with some bigger ones and um, some like three quarter inch and some bigger ones of these and smaller at Joann's and it's $19.99 and if you use a coupon you can get it 50% off. So it's nice because it has a lot of different sizes. So now we're going to take our glue gun, we're going to wipe the tip off because we don't want to get glue on her hand. And what I would do is I would put it on the inside of her sleeve so you kind of have to look and then put that hand back in there. 
And then I have the seam. I want the seam facing down. So just make sure your glue gun is clean. That's why I have Kleenex at, which I use it for other reasons, personal, <laughs> when my nose is running. So we're gonna glue that. I'm gonna go a little bit here down by the seam and just poke it in there. If you got your tip is, if your tip is clean, you don't have to worry about getting glue on her hand then. And then do the same thing to the other one. So we want to glue it so that we make sure that it's going to stay. So get your glue in there and then pull them down. Make sure your thread is covered up. And then I didn't tie her arms, which I'm going to. Um, where did my ribbon go? I had my ribbon. I didn't get my ribbon. Um, actually, I'm not going to use ribbon. I think I'm just going to tie it with string and I'm, we're going to put lace on. Because I just want to make sure it's going to stay. So if you glue it well enough, you don't have to. But I'm just uh, making sure... And we will cover this up. And if you don't want to put lace on the bottom of the sleeves, you don't have to. Okay, so do the other one. I'm trying to work quick, but get this done so you guys can see so it doesn't take an hour. But then we have to make Timothy and Jake. So, but this is a little bit different way than I've made my gnomes. And I, I have tried making girl gnomes before, but I just didn't, I just didn't like them. So, so this, I'm just going to take a piece and I'm just going to glue it so that the, the lace part is facing up. I'm just going to glue around the edge, the bottom of the uh, wrist, the cuff, and just glue that on. And I'm going to move it so that my seam, put your, put your ends down by the seam of your arm so it's not on top. So start by your seam of the sleeve and glue it. And I'll show you again on the other one. And then put a little glue on the lace. And I know I got small scissors here. And then cut that off and then press that down. Okay, so let's do it again. So just cut, you don't need very much. A couple inches if that. And find the seam to the sleeve and we're going to start gluing there. And make sure I got the right side. And this glue is going to kind of come through but it's low temp. It's not the hot glue so it just gets on your fingers which is irritating. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to join my crafting community and be a part of this, my crafting, anything you guys, any ideas you want me to make, any um, questions like the lady from overseas that has questions about or wanted to know a different way to make shoes. So I'm going to do that for her. And that's what I would like you guys to do. I mean, you don't have to, but um, I want to do different things, but I'm, I have tried a couple and it's just like, they haven't taken off like my gnomes. So, okay. So now we're going to take, and we got her, um, gotta make sure you get her centered. My seam on my lace is kind of off, but it's going to get covered up. 
So now we're going to take, and we're going to take her arm, no, we're going to put lace down the front. That's what I was going to do. And I did a couple of rows, so I'm going to try to make sure I'm going to do, put a pin in here so that I know. So you're just going to go, I'm just going to glue like right underneath that lace. And just glue a line down all the way to the bottom. Is that fuzz or string? So it's going to be kind of right down on the, uh, the center. And then you can just cut that. And if you need to tack it down, which I think I will, just a few places here. And then do another piece. I'm just going to kind of overlap them. And then we're going to put buttons on. So let me make sure I have to cut a piece here. So get that so it's even. Make sure you don't cut the bottom of your of her body. And then tack it down. So if you have some other trim or something you want to put on, I just kind of liked the lace. Okay, so there we have that. So now I have glue strings everywhere. So now we're going to make sure we have her her arms and the seam side down. So I have to make sure that when I do it, I can have enough of the arm so that it can hold um, baby Jake, okay? So it's gonna come, it's gonna have to come over here and her side, her seam is right here. So it's gonna have to come over there. So I'm just gonna hold on to it and I'm just gonna glue right up here and wrap it up and then I will cut that excess off and if you need to you can put a little glue inside the arm usually I do that first okay so then we're gonna do the other one seam side down and we're just going to, I'm going to probably make this one a little shorter. So you kind of have to just judge it and, and see where her arms are going to go. So we will glue that. I'm going to hang on to the, the front right here. And so I know where it's going to get glued. And I just want it glued up there at the top and I'm going to cut that excess off and I'm going to put some inside so it probably works out better that way because we're cutting like an inch or so off and then when we get to it when we do the baby if we have to glue this back here and make a little uh, pleat or something we can do that okay so now that we have that I'm just going to glue this a little bit more and I need another glue stick. Okay, so now we are going to get her head on. And this you're going to need some glue. You're going to have to squirt the glue in here and hopefully I have enough of a head piece to... to uh, glue on and I'm going to turn my glue gun up just because I'm trying to get a lot of glue out and glue around the edge and you got to work quick and there's a seam side but it doesn't matter because it's going to be covered up with her hair and I kind of have it so it's angled back a little bit, okay? 
and you're going to have to hold that on there. So that's what we have, okay? And it should be okay. I'm going to minus needs to be centered. So make sure it's centered, okay? And she's kind of lopsided. Okay, so now we're going to do um, we're going to do her nose. And what do they do with her nose? Okay, so we have this. So we're just going to cut a little bit more of this fabric off. Now that I glued it, just like when I did the video with my wine topper nose. I wish somebody would make a stringless hot glue stick. Wouldn't that be, if there is, somebody let me know. Because they stick to my nails terrible. Okay, so we have a hand we don't need. And we're going to put her nose right here and we're gonna be able to tuck it a little bit underneath that um, foam, the foam. And I got a big hard piece. So this is where you want to make sure you get enough, but you don't want too much glue because you don't want it squirting out. And you're going to center it right with her lace. And you're going to tuck it under there. And then we see we can add some on the side if we have to. And we're just going to let that sit. I got a little bit of glue on the side of her nose. But it's not going to be seen when I get the hair on. And I went to Joanne's, this is Memorial Day weekend when I'm finishing that Memorial Day. And Saturday, went into town and I've been looking for gray fur, you guys. And it's like, I've tried, it's so hard to buy stuff online when you can't really tell what it looks like. And let me show you what I got. I'm gonna use this for her. I am not gonna probably have it, it's not gonna be long enough. Um, but I got this at Joann's. I got the whole bolt. And I don't even know how many I had. There was like four and a half yards. And it was $8.99 a yard. And I got it 50% off. So I got this for about $18. $18. So I was pretty excited. And um, I could use this for her. I would have to piece it. But I've got a piece already cut. And, um, give me just a second. I had some other fur um, that I got at um, the thrift store and I wanted to show you, but I'll show it in another video. Okay, so now we have her nose. And we're gonna do her hair. So I have a piece of fur. This is the one. And you're gonna want the fur. Like I did, I did another one and her hair was shorter. And um, I think it's in the bedroom. I can go get it. And I like the longer fur better. I'll be right back. So here's the other one I did. And this was fur, I think I'd gotten this at Walmart. And it's a little bit shorter. Um, but I like the gray better. So use what you use, what you have or whatever. And you're going to want this fur is going to be the top, just like you see it here. So this is the length is coming up here. So we're just going to kind of fold this bottom end under and we're going to glue that. And I should check my camera to make sure I'm still running because if I'm not, I'm going to be mad. Okay. We're still going. <laughs> it's not, it's not good when <laughs> you're videotaping and it's like, oh my god, I went to finish and I shut off like probably a half an hour ago. Okay, so we're just gonna glue that, and this it just worked out because this was a fur that I got from a shawl, and the way it was on the the shawl, it was folded up like that, so it just worked out really good. 
for the nose and stuff. So we're gonna start and we're gonna glue this and you're gonna have to center it and get it glued right down. So you're gonna kind of glue right along. Don't glue too much on the fur, right on the edge. I'm gonna glue that flap down. So right on the edge of the fur and the backing. And don't go all the way across like I just did because I didn't want to do that. So. So I'm just going to kind of lay her down and try not to get this on her nose and pull it down there. And there was gaps. Like here, you can see there's a gap there. But that's going to be covered up by her hair. Okay? So don't worry about that. And now we're going to get, make sure we get this glued to the back and hopefully my piece is long enough. And it's just barely. So make sure you leave it. If you have to measure it before you cut it, make sure it's long enough. If you have to piece it, it's probably not going to be a very big piece and it'll be okay. So now what I'm going to do is... I am going to cut some of this off and I'm going to do my backing because I don't want to cut the fur itself. And if you can use an X-Acto knife, more power to you because I just cannot. I just think I would wreck too much fur trying to cut it. And this way I can cut it the shape I want and still not cut my fur. So there is a way to do it with scissors. It just kills me when I see somebody at the cutting counter. It's like, I'll stop them before they cut. It's like, no, <laughs> I had to do, I did that at Walmart and I don't think she was happy with me, but it's like, you just wasted like probably a couple inches of my fur by cutting it blunt. When you're paying, you know, there at Walmart, it's like $14 an hour, $14 an hour. About $14, $15 a yard. So I have quite a bit at the top. You can see. So I'm going to cut it off about probably an inch. But I want to leave it so I have extra above the top of that um, cone. Make just sure you're just cutting your backing. And then just keep those pieces. You never know. Because you can use this if you wanted to make a baby with gray hair. <laughs> or you could use it for mustaches for gnomes. Okay, so now we're just going to glue. Make sure you get the fur out of the way. And we're going to put it on the backing. If she'll just sit still. And then glue the other side. Make sure you get them both so they're butt, butted up right against each other. And wipe your glue gun off. Wipe the fur. Okay. Put another glue stick in. And then glue that down. Get it right next to that other one and push them together. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut little slits, just the backing, like about three quarter of an inch apart, half inch apart. So I got about one, two, three slits. And I'm just gonna take some glue glue gun and just put it on that top edge of the fur so you're going to put it right inside there okay and we're going to pinch those together so you got to have it long enough so it's going to come up over the top of her cone so there we go we have it i just think that is just cute and what we're going to do is I just, I just did this and I need to put some glue in there because it was, it's coming up.
So we have to let that sit. So while that's sitting, let's do Timothy. And I'm going to do this a little bit different than, or no, wait a minute. Nope, I got my sock. I have a baby sock. This is from the Dollar Tree. They come two pairs. And so I'm going to use a baby sock for him. Little piece of cardboard, and he will get some rice. You should be able to get that sock around that cup. And we're going to stuff him. And then I have some plaid, red and green plaid, that we're going to cover his body with. And we're going to leave the top open like we do because we need a head to put on for his hair. And I will show you how I cut his hair. So you're just going to do just like we normally do. You're going to take your, take your corners up first. And then make sure you got all those pulled up. And then wrap your string around. And if you want to do it like I did my nose, you just got to have long enough string. And then you're going to tie these. Tie it in a knot. I have to do something and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to pull up. And if you can't grab this, get your needle nose. And make sure you got the gathers so they're not too bunched up. You have to separate the it a little bit. And then we're going to cut the excess off. And I, this piece I believe was like a eight by eight piece of a square fabric. So it depends on how big you make them and how little, how big a piece you need. And I can still cut some of this off. And his nose, we have his nose, and his nose, I'm not going to cut the string. I'm going to tie his on. Oops. Get that out of the way. And I didn't, I missed one of my threads back here. careful not to pull on your nose too much usually the front of when I use a sock the front of the gnome becomes where the heel of the sock is I'm gonna cut this off so I can tie it and then I have his arms and I'm probably going to have to, his arms are really long, so I'm probably going to have to cut them and shorten them. Because I have his cuffs I just folded under. Okay, and cut your excess off. So that's, that's little Timothy. Okay. And his nose could have been a little bit smaller. Okay, so now we are going to just tie his head off. I'm going to maybe pull a little bit of stuffing out because I don't want him to have. And if you can tie this, if you can glue it, whatever you want to do.
just so it's secure because we have to get his hair on. But before we do his hair, we got to do his arms. <clears throat> so there's Timothy. Like I said, his nose could have been a little bit smaller. You know what? I'm going to do it smaller because I don't like it. <laughs> I know. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to make another nose and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I have... Timothy's nose a lot smaller than that one. That was too big. Okay, so for his hair, I have, and I think this is way too much. His hair has got to go, so the fur is going down. So let me just cut this, because we don't need this whole big length. So I just kind of measured it around his head so I could make sure that these either are going to overlap and then we don't want them to overlap. We want them to pinch them together so that you can cut it so it will bunch up next to each other. And I'm going to cut this right now. It's about five inches and I'm going to cut it down. it's about one and a half inches wide and that's perfect and it depends on your head how big your head is and how big he is so before we do that before I forget we have to do his arms and I just have the little um, wooden balls I'm just going to use for him and I'm just going to put those in there and I'm going to make sure I have the holes are in so they're not sticking out. So get your glue down inside of your arm and then push that down in there. And this bead might be too big. It's too big. So let me get a smaller bead. dries shut. This is where I'm going to use my players here. It already hasn't dried. Okay, so I had to take the it out because it kind of stuck together and I got to get the glue down in there. And then just make sure you can hide. You don't have to, I guess, if you wanted to leave the hole showing, that's fine. If you wanted to put something in it, like he was holding a sign or something, then you would have, you could just put the sign through the hole. this one side covered up because I think I, when I first started putting that glue in there. Oh, that's going to bug me. So I'm just going to cut that end off and try to tuck this in. Just using a needle to tuck that in. Okay, let's try again. So the 
put that in there and shove it down in there before it gets before it dries. I think I still have my glue gun on high, so there we go. Just like that. <clears throat> so now we'll do the other one. I'm gonna probably I might end up cutting these in half. We'll see. There's fur everywhere. And glue strings. So there, and then we're just going to take a little bit of crochet thread and wrap around his arms. Just for decoration. And you could use ribbon, you could use jute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cut that off and we'll do the other arm. So we have that done. Now we're going to see. We want his arm to be long enough because it's like he has it and he's hanging on to grandma. So I want it to go around the back of her. So seam side down. So I don't think we're going to have to cut his arm. So his finished arm was about eight inches. So if you do it at nine inches, and I'm going to write that down. So I would do two and a half inches by nine inches. And I will have these measurements and everything in the description box below. And then we're going to glue it. So seam side of the arm down. Trying to get all the fur off of there. And then you're just going to want to glue it. You're going to have to make sure you glue it up high enough in the back so that if it comes down that it's, it'll be part of, it'll look like it's part of, you know, his body. So find the middle and put some glue there. And then right opposite the back of his head, right from opposite from his nose, glue it. Okay, so now we're going to put his, um, his, we got to go down. I got to make sure I get it down the right way. So this, you're just going to glue it right by the edge of that backing. Go just a little bit of ways because if it squeezes out, it'll just squeeze out right to the end. And you're going to want to center this. I'm going to lay it down and then I'll show you. So you're going to go right above his nose. So you're going right above his nose, okay? And we're going to cut this off. If you want to leave it like that, that's up to you. And then you're going to want to make sure and then glue it to the back. And if you need to cut a little bit of that sock off, you can do that. If you have to glue it, which I think I'm gonna put some glue on the knot of where we tied his head on. Just if it comes undone, it won't. If it comes undone, it won't. So it won't come undone. 
and you're gonna have to pinch these together. So you gotta make sure it's long enough. Mine was almost too short. So glue your side seams or your back seam. So there's the back of his head. You're gonna glue those and you're gonna pinch them shut. And I did get glue on the top part of his hair. So we're gonna cut it off. So make sure that is glued. And then we're going to, we're going to cut just a little bit. You're going to cut down the backing and I'm going to cut a little bit off. So I'm just going around this. If you cut the cut all the way through, it's not going to matter because it's the top of his head. And then I'm going to cut my slits and I'm just going to cut the backing about half inch slits, about quarter inch down, not very far. And then you're gonna put glue on the inside, not right up close to the edge, down a little bit. Like, okay, and then we're gonna squeeze those together and you gotta kinda squeeze them in and push them in, push them down. So then that looks like he's got the top of his hair, okay? And my back seam is coming apart. I might have to let's see if I can pinch it together. So make sure your piece is long enough because it's going to go from that nose wrapped around. And then we're going to just make sure we can cover up. So, and if you if you can kind of pull it apart, um, then put some glue. And see, I've got this little peak here. I'm going to cut that off. That's the backing. If you think you can cut it off, that's you know fine. If you wait until we get done doing his haircut to see, because I've done that too. Okay. So how I did his hair was I just, and you gotta have some scissors. You gotta be careful you don't cut his nose. Let me get, I'm gonna get a paper towel here. So I can get his hair to fall on here. So I'm just going to kind of go around and do a blunt cut. How much of his nose you want to show, that is truly up to you. And it's going to shed and everything else. We just have to make sure we keep his keep hair down there so we can keep his nose covered. And I kind of shake him over the garbage. And if you have a brush, so you can brush it. Okay, and then I took his hair and I did this. And I just cut some of these long ones Just cut a little bit, if you're kind of scared about cutting it, just cut a little bit first. And not a whole lot at 
you know, and then you're like, oh, I cut it too short and you got it glued on his head and now you got to make a whole new Timothy. So, cause I'm just trying to get it to look a little bit layered like that. I used to be a hairdresser. Not that this is, <laughs> not that that's a hairstyle that I would give anybody in real life, mind you. Okay, so let's get rid of some of this fur. So it's kind of, this is the part that takes a little bit. So that doesn't look too bad. And I'm going to try and cut some of these peaks off in the top here. And if you can pull open your top, then you want to glue it again and pinch it together. And I have part of his body showing here. I'm going to cut that gather out if I can. And we'll bring his arm. You won't see that. We'll glue that down. And you can cut it down like this too if you want. You just have to have it out a little bit. And then I just try to make sure it looks even on both sides in the front by his nose. Like I said, start off with a little bit and you can always go shorter. And then I stick them right back in where I'll drop them all in the hair. So this is the part of the video you might have to watch a couple of times is how to do his hair. And we're going to glue his arm a little bit more over here so it covers up that spot on his body and over here. Make sure we get his hair out of the way. And if his arm is too long, just take a little gather and just like a pinch it and then glue it. And where is she? Where did she go? So yeah, her arms look really long, but that's because she's not holding the baby. So we're going to do, I'm just going to take a little pinch here and gather his arms because I think they're just a little long. And then just glue that down. And I think the other one's okay. And his tie came off. I'll do that after. So there's Timothy. See, I would cut his hair a little bit more by his nose. Okay, so there we have Timothy. And now let me quickly show you how to do the baby. I have this, and I'm not sure what it is. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. They come in a package um, in the party section. So if they're stir sticks, I'm not sure. But I wanted it because the other beads had a hole in it. And I didn't want a bead with a hole. So I just cut this end off. And be careful you don't cut yourself. So then I'm just able to glue it onto, this is a curler from the Dollar Tree. 
So I got a, this is probably the smallest one is a blue. And that's going to be the body of our blanket. And this blanket I have is about six by six. So I'm going to cut one of the corners off. And I'm going to lay that in there. And we don't want, and I just, this might be too much fabric, but you can make a blanket however you want to. And I'm going to make it smaller. So we're going to wrap that over there. Let me think about this first before I do it wrong. Okay. I'm going to even cut it smaller. Okay, so if you're going to cut this, I would do it like four inch by four inch. And I'm going to raise that down. Okay, so we're just going to glue this down in the center. And it's going to melt because I got it's on hot. Oh, you know what? No, nope, don't do that. We need his hair on first. I forgot about his hair. I gotta turn my glue gun down. So we're gonna glue, and you don't need a very big piece for this. I will tell you how long it is. So this is about two and a half inches. Oh, about five eighths wide. So, and this you're gonna glue just like we did grandma's hair, where the hair is going up. So you're just going to glue around the top of that curler and put that in. And you're not going to need even three inches. You're going to need a lot less than that. I gotta glue it down further on the curler. So I got it glued in there. So I got it glued about a quarter of an inch down from the top of the curler. I'm gonna pinch those back, those two pieces together where the, the fur meets. And then if you can, if you can squeeze some glue in the opening, do that. You don't probably need very much. You can even let it slide down and pinch that shut. And just make sure you have it glued onto the roller. If you want to use, if you have a dull rod or if you just want to even wrap up a piece of um, fleece into a circle, you can do that. Let me show you. Man, I don't know what I did with the extra stuff I cut off. So if you wanted to do this, let me show you. Just take and roll some of this up. And you don't have to go and buy a curler. And then there you go. Okay? So that's all you're gonna that's all you're gonna do is body. Don't go buy curlers. Just like this. So you're going to glue this and then you can wrap his hair around, which I don't have a big enough piece. And then you got your baby. Nobody's going to see this. It's going to be in the blanket. Okay. So we're going to glue this in the blanket. And I got fur again. I got it in my blanket. And if you can find the seam side of the fur and the, the hair and glue that to the back of the blanket. And then you're gonna take and figure out how much you're gonna bring over and just glue it right alongside the body because then you can cut this excess off. So however you wanna wrap it, 
And then we're going to bring this bottom up and we're going to have to cut more of that. So we're just going to bring And nobody's going to see this under part here, so glue that down. And then wrap this around to the other side. You might have to bring, you're going to have to bring this up. So however it works for you to wrap this. So we want his hair going up. And we're going to cut some more. So then we're just going to wrap that around. So I got it like this. Okay. And we're just going to glue this. Glue your edges. I'm running out of glue sticks. So just like that, and I'm even going to put some ip up here by the top so the curler isn't showing or anything. And then we're going to glue his nose on. So that's why I kind of wanted this so we didn't have to worry about the holes on the bead. And you're just going to glue that on and there's our little baby Jake. Okay. So, we are going to move some stuff out of the way. So, we're going to get Jake in her arms. So this can take a little bit of work is to figure out how she's going to hold him. And if her arm is too long, we'll just make a pleat. So I'm going to glue the side of the baby right there and glue it right up by where I want her to be holding him. And I'm going to make a little tuck with her sleeve. Keep her hair out of the way. Okay, so that's how I'm going to glue it. I haven't glued this yet, but I got him glued. I had to move him down. I had him up too far. And then I'm just going to glue her arm right under here. And even glue her hand a little bit. Got a little bit of glue on his blanket. And then we're going to take her other arm and we can bring it up however you want to do that. So let me take a look and see how I want to glue this. So I'm going to think I'm going to glue it right up underneath there. So I'm going to glue it alongside her body, going across the front of her body, and then just up like that. So by placing it before you put glue on, then you know exactly where you have to put your glue. So there we have that. I'm going to check my camera and make sure I'm still filming.
Okay. Told you this is a long video, you guys. <laughs> and now we got to put some ribbon in her hair. And let's see, I can't remember what size I used. So I have some ribbon and I'm going to take a piece because I need enough to tie and I am going to bring her hair. I'm just going to kind of give her bangs going this way and I'm just going to grab a bunch of the fur and if you have a little rubber band you could put that around there and then it would be easier. I don't know if I have some right off hand. I did somewhere. Let me take a break and I will look. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have some black ones. And you can get some of these at the dollar store too. So I'm just going to find out where I want this ribbon kind of up. And I think they even have like clear ones at the dollar store I've bought them. And it doesn't even need to be very tight. So just like that. Okay. And then I have to have her face in me so I can tie her ribbon. And this is quarter inches is grow green. And if you have to put some glue on that, well, then you melt your rubber band. So you just got to make sure you get it covered up. And then we're going to tie a bow. It's hard because she wants to roll around. The kids have got to hold her in place. So there she is. And I have some buttons that what I did and I put some um, crochet thread on them, tied it, and if I don't lose my button. So you're going to start from the back, and I can't hang on to it. Start from the back, go through one hole, and then go through the one on the opposite side of the other hole. I got the wrong thread. Okay, so then you have it like that. Okay, so your two threads uh, uh, ends are on the back. And then you're going to take one and go up to the other hole. It depends on if you have two or four holes. And then go back down. You can have the tie on the front. Mine are on the back. So you can do it either way. And tie that in a knot. And then you're going to glue it on her ribbon. Or her lace on the front. So I'm going to glue it right kind of in the middle. And 
I had a third one. And then we'll glue the third one up here. And then I will put, I did put a bow. So we're going to make a bow and put that up by her collar. Or you know what, I'm just going to do... Scissors that will cut. So I'm just going to do a little tie. Just tie the knot and I'm going to glue that. I'm going to singe my ends first. Melt them. And you don't even have to touch it to do that. So I'm just going to glue this right below the lace that we put on her collar for her collar and right above the button. So there, we have to come up with a name for her. This is Grandma Ellie. Do you want to come up with a name, another name? And then there's little Timothy. I think these turned out so cute. So if you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. If you have anything you want me to explain again, what I used, um, just let me know. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you would click on that subscribe button and click on the bell, that will notify you each time I upload a new video. If you have subscribed to my channel, thank you for supporting me and subscribing joining my crafting community and so you let me know what you think of Grandma Ellie, Timothy, and Baby Pink, the gnomes. Thank you for joining me today. You guys have a good week. Bye-bye.